This is the Lenovo Tab M8 FHD that I got as a prize from a competition. I've been using it for almost a year now, and at this point I can definitely say that I like it, especially because I got it for free. And for a sub $150 tablet, this thing is packing. So don't sleep on this thing, because in my opinion, it's definitely one of the best budget tablets on the market. One of the first things that I noticed about this tablet is that it looks like it's trying to be an Apple Eye device. The materials, shape, even the raised camera bump give off Apple vibes, but nobody said that was a bad thing. The aluminum chassis is colored between Apple silver and space gray, with plastic bumpers at the top and bottom edges. The build quality is good, I can't bend or twist the tablet with my hands, so that's a win. The micro USB port that's used for charging and data transfer is a bit of a disappointment in the face of the ubiquity of USB Type-C on mobile devices, but it isn't a deal breaker for me. On the other side, there's a single speaker grill and a headphone jack. The speakers are acceptable if you turn on the pre-installed Dolby audio enhancements, but even then they sound a tad hollow and they don't have as much bass as the speakers on an iPhone 6s. Without the enhancements, they sound like mid-tier laptop speakers. As a side note, the proprietary software-controlled audio enhancement is one thing that I don't like a lot about Lenovo's products, including this tablet and recent ThinkPads like my T450s. I just wish they built the enhancements into the device firmware. On the other hand, the screen does provide for a decent viewing experience. This tablet packs a 1920x1200 display in its 8-inch frame. This 284 dpi screen is similar in pixel density to the first generation iPad Air, so it's very sharp. One downside is that it isn't the brightest. Even at maximum brightness, it struggles under natural daylight, but it is pleasant indoors. Right above that display is the front-facing camera. It's okay for things like video calls, although it is grainy. However, there is one big feature enabled by it, facial recognition. The tablet can unlock using your face, and the experience is pretty good. The face unlock works under most conditions as long as there is a little bit of light. The algorithm is also pretty good at recognizing me both with and without glasses on. It doesn't seem to work against photos, which is good. As for security and privacy, it's likely not as good as Apple's Face ID because it doesn't store the data in a secure coprocessor. The rear camera is similarly mediocre. It's got a 13 megapixel sensor, but the photos it takes have poor color reproduction and are grainy even in good lighting. This tablet certainly doesn't have Apple's image processing on its side, and the camera systems unfortunately falter compared to higher-end ones. For software, this tablet ships with Android 10 pre-installed. I've gotten a few updates since I first got the tablet, but the biggest difference I've seen are changes in icons. From the first glance, the install seems to be a stock Google Android installation. Lenovo did preload a game center and a game that I deleted from the system. They also integrated Lenovo account login in the settings app. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to try any of the degoogled Android versions because I haven't found one that supports this tablet yet. But the stock install is fine. Overall, this tablet is pretty smooth to use. It's powered by an 8-core MediaTek Helio P22T SoC with 4 higher clocked and 4 lower clocked cores. The chip does keep the Android UI free from noticeable lag. However, the integrated PowerVR GE8320 graphics struggle with heavier gaming. 2D games with simple graphics run just fine, but in games like Geometry Dash, complex levels with lots of elements lag a lot. Lighter 3D games run fine at lower resolutions, but still drop frames occasionally and don't feel very smooth. The benchmarks reflected this performance. On Geekbench 5, the tablet scored very low on both CPU and Vulkan compute benchmarks, and it crashed on the OpenCL compute benchmarks both times I tried to run it. So treat it as a gaming equivalent of a mid-tier to high-end device from 2015 or so. Really, most people aren't going to use this tablet to do heavy work, so what I really want to touch on is the daily driving experience. And it's decent. As I alluded to before, the thing doesn't skip a beat in web browsing and media playback. It's small enough to fit into the pockets of my shorts, my sweatpants, and my jacket, so it should be portable enough for pretty much any use case. Battery life is pretty good, and as a bonus, Lenovo's battery protection mode is a saving grace for my tablet, which stays plugged in probably too much for my own good. And the expandable storage via microSD is a great addition to the 32 gigs of built-in eMMC flash. Of course, there are some quirks that aren't deal breakers but do take away from this tablet. The auto brightness feels like a gear hunting automatic transmission. It can't stay in one place and I find myself having to change the brightness manually. 
and the facial recognition doesn't work after a few minutes of sleep because it starts trying to detect your face right after you turn the screen off. But as I said, they're not deal breakers. So really, this tablet might feel like a knockoff iPad, but that isn't a bad thing. Obviously, it doesn't match the Apple experience, if you're into that kind of thing. But for under 150 bucks, you are not going to find something much better. Thanks for watching.